After a restful night at the Diver's Inn, we wake up to a spectacular sunrise over the Bay of La Paz. After Christy treats us to a tasty breakfast, we're packed up and ready to go bright and early, excited for a day of exploration as we make our way up the coast. The Diver's Inn is located in a relatively underdeveloped area just outside of town. And so we get a chance to ride some dirt along the bay first thing in the morning. Not a bad way to start the day. Our main goal for today is to get to San Juanico and explore the endless beaches of Scorpion Bay. It's gonna be a long slog to the western coast of the peninsula, retracing our steps for the flat, straight desert stretch of Highway 1. A stretch of road that's in the Guinness Book of World Records is one of the longest continuous stretches of perfectly straight road in the world. Along our route today, we've repeatedly seen historical landmark signs for San Miguel de Comondú. The map says it's only about an hour detour from the main route, so we decide to check it out. The road twists and winds through a scenic canyon. It's punctuated by these verdant oases around the rivers. little paved water crossing ends up being much more treacherous than it appears. A carpet of moss that had grown over the cement almost sent me flying off the road and into the river. We arrived first in San Miguel de Comandú, which was the second of the Comandú Pueblos to be established. Many of the old buildings are dilapidated but there's still definitely life in this town. These days, the economy is driven largely by palm farming, which yields both dates and palm fronds, which are used to make all of the beautiful thatch roofs you see throughout Baja. We head up the canyon to San Jose del Comandú, which was established as a mission in 1708, only the fourth of the 27 missions that would eventually be established in Baja. left of the mission. Most of the original structure was actually torn down by order of the local governor, ostensibly so that the stones could be reused for other construction. This doesn't make a lot of sense though, given the abundance of stone in the canyon, and probably this was an act of cultural revolt against the missions and the subjugation which they represented. Obviously pretty old school because they still have John Paul II as their, as the Pope. <laughs> Maybe word hasn't reached. <laughs> This lady stops and tells us a bit about the town's history. The town lies right along the old Baja Road, which used to be the only way down the peninsula. The construction of Highway 1 bypassed the town, leaving it isolated in this remote canyon. The story is reminiscent of all the dead and dying towns that were forgotten when Route 66 was bypassed by the interstates. Luckily, Comandú has enough going for it to keep this little community alive, even without the freeway traffic. back down the canyon. This crossing didn't get me on the way up, but despite my careful approach, it got me on the way back. No worse for wear, we finally reached the coast and turn north towards San Juanico. The road is scenic and paved. Well, sometimes anyways. I have 
I feel like some possibly more explicit and earlier signage. <laughs> some rocks in a cone couldn't be appropriate in this case. Arriving in San Juanico, we take a spin around town to get a lay of the land before heading down to explore the beach. Hola. ¿Y el hotel? El hotel está abierto. Ah, okay. Based on some research last night, I'm starting to have some reservations about tomorrow's route, which apparently can involve some very deep sand. The gas vendor says he recently passed through in a two-wheeled sedan without much trouble. He gives us some good route advice and says that if we keep our speed down and watch out for hazards, we should be just fine. The sun is dropping quickly, so we head down to explore the beach. Thirty miles of continuous beach, and many different breaks. Scorpion Bay is the premier surf spot in Baja. Its remoteness and the lack of a paved road from the north has kept development down and allowed it to retain its rustic vibe, though it does get overrun by surfers in the high season. Luckily, we're here in January, so we have the endless expanse of the beach almost entirely to ourselves. It's been a long day, and while we're a little disappointed that we couldn't find a campsite near town, the idea of sleeping in a bed sounds pretty good right now. We stop for tacos and beers at the Burra and Primavera restaurant before calling it a night. <laughs> 